So in 2004, I started a company exporting chili peppers um, and we contacted farmers. So we needed a system to manage all these different uh, processes. And it's actually this system that we uh, commercialized 11 years later in 2015. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So the coast of Kenya is one of the poorest areas, um, in one of the poorest areas of, of Kenya. And we work with um, small scale farmers. So we offer the, market, the, the farmers market certainty by signing a contract with them. Um, even though they have a market, they still need to know how to grow, how to grow the crop. For, so we always managed large scale training programs. And, um, and of course, once the farmers have a market and they know how to grow the crop, they still need uh, to be able to finance the crop yeah, and the, the activities. So we developed systems for that uh, in-house. And I was very lucky with my business partner who was uh, IT tech. And it's these systems that we commercialized 11 years later. So how do, how do companies typically manage? Uh, you might recognize this often uh, aggregators, even though they might be working with thousands of farmers, they use paper systems or Excel. And this is quite a, this of course can be quite a challenge. Systems that would work with 100 farmers, they might not work anymore once you start sourcing from thousands of farmers. It's simply a different, uh, different board game. So we have um, supply chain management systems. We commercialized it in 2015. And together with Kenny Investment Mechanism, we have been discussing how systems like this can help basically uh, to create access to finance for farmers, but also for the food processors and the commodity traders. Now, as I said, we, we commercialized the system in 2015. And what, what exactly we offer is a supply chain management system yeah, for the food processors, the commodity traders, or the farmer cooperatives. And we aim at, uh, to make it very affordable. And so roughly as an indication for larger companies, we aim at half a dollar, 50 Kenyan shillings per farmer per year. For large numbers, this is even lower per farmer. Uh, even though we sell the license to the to the aggregator, the food processor, the commodity trader. And it is also very important that the system works offline. So we designed it in a way that when there is no internet or when the internet is very poor, the synchronization between the mobile application and the desktop application still, still works smoothly, of course. So it has to work in areas where the internet is very poor. Now in the system, there's a lot of information. So there is information that the buyer needs from the farmers, but this information can actually be used now also, for example, for the bank or for a program like Kenyan Investment Mechanism to report to the financiers of their program yeah, for the monitoring and evaluation. So I'll come back to that in a little bit. So this is a little bit the history. We started in 2015, we did pilots, even though the system system had been there for 11 years, we, we never intended to commercialize it. So in the beginning, we had to start even by giving it a name, for example. Then later we, we expanded with a number of trials. Then we expanded in the region, West Africa. In the meantime, we are in 10 African countries, in Guatemala and also in um, Afghanistan. So we have a very flexible system, which is used in many different sectors. Um, so that is, that is actually quite important. We, we have, often systems have to be custom built. We built it in a way that we can basically um, in, um, yeah, configure it for our clients. So we don't need to add code. That is actually what normally makes systems very expensive. Yeah, if you need to make modifications to the software code. So we, fit, we put it in a way, we configured it, or we set it up in a way that we can actually configure it for clients in a very, very fast. And basically within a couple of days, the system can be up and running. So at the moment we have about 75 clients in a large number of uh, countries, and they source from about 250,000 farmers in those areas. Now, what does the system do exactly? 
So to start with, you would need to have the farmers in place. Okay? You need to have the farmers in the database. So the farmers, the groups, the fields. Now, often I hear about companies, they talk about, for example, certification, so they can reach premium markets. But they not, do not even have a database of the farmers. So obviously this is, this is not possible. It's very important that you have a full data set of the farmers. And from there, for example, you can also sign contracts with farmers, or communicate with them. Now, in reality, farmers often organized in groups. Farmers can have uh, a number of fields. Farmers could be member even of <clears throat> members of different groups. Groups could be on the cooperatives. There could be a trader. And sometimes the trader or the food processor uh, has actually some working relationships with programs like Kenya Investment Mechanism, and they need to also share information. Now, in reality, there are all kinds of combinations possible under one trader. Some farmers might be organized uh, in groups, but other farmers might supply directly to the trader. Or it could be that the trader has their own farm, and part of the production is actually produced by themselves on a nucleus farm. So this is this is basically the reality on the ground, and we had to def develop a system to be able to cope with that. Now, often the internet is very poor, but if the internet allows, the system that um, it, it is very convenient if the system would be cloud-based. So in that case, we have made it also for areas where the internet is fast enough that you can basically work uh, with a database in the cloud and everywhere in the world, you can basically access the data. Where the internet is very poor, this is, this is simply not possible. To make it reliable, yeah, we had to compromise here. But in, as a result, we have a platform that is, works in the most remote places, but also in the places where the internet is um, very advanced. So it's also important that you know exactly where are the farmers, the fields, the collection centers, specifically yeah, if you need traceability of product. So once you have the farmers in the system, you need to be able to build the capacity of the farmers. So you might have a training program, extension officers that are training farmers, and you need to record, for example, the attendance. The attendance is important because you might need to report it, or you might want to select farmers that have attended certain training programs, for example. You also would like to communicate with the farmers for example, via v SMS, which also functions on simple feature phones. So you are sure that you can reach all the farmers, even with the, the, the oldest telephones. Now, it's very important that you can also share information and ideally in an automated, automated way, like for example, weather forecast or yield forecasting, or you might want to share information about um, pest and disease share pest and disease alerts. So we have some of these automated features in our system. Yeah, so we can communicate, communicate it to the farmers or to the staff. Now, once you have farmers in the systems and you're able to train them, um, you also want to be able to, um, to collect the product. And of course, then farmers need to be paid. So when you're collecting the product, you need a fully traceable product. So we help, we have functions in the system to make sure that you can trace back all your product to the field, but also, for example, to the bag that the product was uh, transported in. So if you would get a complaint from your client, for example, there are stones in the bags, or the moist content is not good, or pesticides, uh, traces of pesticides have been found, you can trace it back to the farmer and to the field. Now, once you have collected a product, the farmers need to be paid. So we have integrations with, in the system to, for example, pay farmers uh, mobile phone or e-wallet or through bulk bank transfers. You might want to pay farmers uh, a premium. The deliveries are, are higher. And you could also, for example, compulsory saving. So you manage, for example, you, you agree with the farmers to save percentage or fixed amount per delivery, which the farmers can then show to the bank 
for example, to do them uh, as a capacity of saving and then they can take bigger loans from the bank, for example. One of the features in the system is, for example, the quality-based payment. And I selected a very brief movie to show you a little bit how that works. I know some of the Kenya investment mechanism partners are actually in the dairy sector. So I picked this, uh, an example for the dairy sector. But basically the quality-based pay payment is, um, is uh, very important because you can now <clears throat> make sure that farmers are better quality, for example, <laughs> farmers that have uh, might receive a fine or the product might be rejected. There's a few other possibilities, like you can do split payment. Uh, um, so in case you would like to do, for example, a split payment, like in the tea sector, for example, it's very common that farmers receive a base price and at the end of season they receive the balance. So this is possible in the system. Uh, in uh, Other companies sometimes work, apply warehouse receipt systems. So these are all functionalities that the system could manage. So regarding quality-based payment, I would like to show you a very short movie um, to give you an indication of the system. After this presentation, we will do a, a short live demo. But this is an example where, for example, at the milk collection center, the milk is weighed, and the product um, is the collection. So the product is collected on the, on the mobile phone. Um, so the, capture, the, the kilos were captured. You can use a Bluetooth scale if you want. Um, you could actually print a small receipt for the farmers, a collection receipt. You can select what variables you want on that receipt. For example, of course, kilos, date, driver, co-driver, um, yeah, different, different information. Now, this is uh, the part on the quality-based payment. So if you, if you, uh, you could either, for example, take a, do a grading, take a sample of the French beans or the chilies and do a grading on the different classes that you define in the system. If the quality can be measured by a device, we can integrate it. So in this example, this device is testing the quality of the milk. It will give you the parameters of the milk, for example, fat, um, solid non-fats, different, different aspects, pH. Now these parameters, you can put them in the system. You see here they are imported and then you can put a rule in the system. For example, butter fat is higher than 3%, I pay a premium price of one shilling per kilo. Uh, or for example, if water has been added, we reject the milk. Now, of course, in, in the system, you can actually make several parameters interact. So you can say, for example, I pay a premium for high butter fat, but if the milk is sour, the milk is rejected. And all this is nicely communicated uh, to the farmer, to the group, to the uh, field staff, to the senior management, all the stakeholders. And this is also very important now, for example, to do the, um, to, uh, to, to create the incentives to pay the, for the premiums, um, which at the end is also important to get to assure that the volumes and the quality uh, that the buyer requires is there. Now, a very important step is the access to finance. Now, how can you create access to finance? Uh, many of you are working with farmers. They might have a bank account, but they probably don't have a, a credit history with the bank. So based on what is the bank going to assess their risks uh, the credit scoring? Now, the bank would typically ask, send us your pay slip, send us your um, title deed for your land, things like that. But this is very difficult with most farmers. Now, we work a lot with the banks and they can use what we call alternative KYC yeah, or know your customer. Information that comes out of the EPROD system that can be used to assess the risks for the bank. So for example, the bank might have a risk profile and they might agree that some farmers, uh, the farmers, for example, women that have a 
are above a certain age and below a certain age, they have a valid contract. There might be uh, the, maybe without a history of any defaults. They have a crop in the field, which is performing well. Uh, they are participating in the training. Their field is performing well. This, uh, they have high productivity above average, for example. So these parameters can be combined and used to select the farmers that are eligible, for example, for an input finance package. Now, how does this work? So the bank can, for example, uh, make an agreement with the, the buyer, the SME, that, for example, the loan is given directly to the farmer, but the SME, the, the buyer, is assisting by paying all the farmers through the bank account of the bank. Yeah, so there could be a three-way, a tripartite agreement to finance the farmers. So the loan can go directly to the farmer, but repayment is through checkoff. Every time when the farmer delivers product, some part of it is used to repay the loan. In ePlot, you could actually also manage that the loan is going directly to, to you as a buyer from the farmers. And through ePlot, you would manage the loan. So for example, you could say, every time when a farmer delivers product, a percentage is deducted, or a fixed amount is deducted from every delivery or a fixed amount per month, or you accept cash repayments. And then in the system, you can actually manage multiple loans and the loans could be simultaneously and you could prioritize which loans have to be repaid first. And so this will assist you to, to uh, without normally taking the risks yourself, this will assist the buyer to make sure that farmers have access to finance. And banks are very happy to, to collaborate, first of all, because the buyer will lead the farmers to one bank okay, or a few banks. And then um, the credit history is built up and loans can now become a reality for the farmers. Now, how does EPROT help on the side of your accountability? So the accountability is very important if people want to invest in your company, like you would have a financial accountability system like Sage, QuickBooks, Tally, you also need basically an accountability system for your sourcing operations. And typically, Sage, QuickBooks, Tally, these systems, they are not meant to do your thousands of entries every, every week. A few hundred shillings for this farmer, a few hundred shillings for this farmer. But these, these systems are not not meant to be managed to be used like that. So EPROT would manage the payment of the farmers. We can integrate it with your financial accountability software. So you could export your farmer payments and every month your profit and loss and your balance sheet will be automatically updated. Now, in the system, you have so much data so you can analyze uh, a lot of your processes like the yield forecasting, um, your cost, your cost estimate, you can compare years, of course, seasons. Um, the, the, the system will also help you on the accountability regarding staff. The supervisors, they can assign tasks in the system on the mobile phone to the field staff. And these tasks will appear when they are due. And then the field staff basically receives a message and they can, um, they can report on the task. So for example, if you want to do a survey uh, for Global Gap or a household survey, because maybe any investment mechanism is interested in that, the, um, the supervisor can assign these surveys <clears throat> and the staff will, re will read on the mobile phone which farmer to visit, which field or which group and what questions to ask. And you can see on the survey where and when the survey was done. It is geo-referenced. You could check if your staff member actually was with the farmer when they did the interview or whether they basically could have made up the questions. Yeah, so you can uh, use it to manage your staff and monitor their movement. You can also use ePROT for planning. For example, the planning of activities or uh, the collection routes. So it's very expensive to do the collection of farmers. If you're sending a truck, you don't want to send a truck 
which is too small and you might halfway have to send the second truck or if you send a truck which is too big and the truck comes back half full you ex you're basically spending too much money so eplot is very important to help um, plan and optimize the collection routes in the system there are many reports and the reports basically the reports can uh, be shared so you have probably more than 100 reports about farmer payments, collections, field inspections, training participation, contracts, and so on. With these reports, you can share them, for example, with Kenya Investment Mechanism. And then basically you can share that information by email, or you can basically um, upload it in platforms. And that information uh, will help you to report very transparently. The EPROD can help you communicate. So like I mentioned, you can communicate through SMS or email, two-way SMS. Uh, there's all kinds of possibilities for, for communication. So as I mentioned, in the system is a lot of data. The data can be used in many different ways. Obviously for you as a buyer, you need to, uh, you need to do, manage your field operations. But you can imagine that you have uh, a large company, for example, Export Trading Group, buying from many companies like yours so they might need your information to improve for example their yield forecasting yeah? and they can sign them better contracts with their market yeah? or let's say in case they cannot meet the contracted demands uh, or obligations they can at least have alternative way of sourcing or if they have too much they can find alternative markets and so on I mentioned already the example of the, the financial institutions where you can basically reduce the risks for the bank. So the bank uh, finds it more interesting to lend money to your farmers and you can help the banks remove the transaction, uh, reduce the transaction cost as well. So in the case of development organizations, the system can help you report. Yeah, so that will save you a lot of time um, as John has mentioned, we have, um, I started, uh, I still have uh, the other company at the coast of Kenya, Equator Kenya Limited. Uh, this year, we will train um, 120 groups on six training topics. Yeah, so this is a lot of work if you need to record all this attendance uh, by hand. So EPROD can really make life uh, much easier. Now, how much does EPROD cost? And so as a typical trader that would have a few thousand farmers, let's say up to 5,000 farmers, would uh, pay an annual license fee of about, um, so what is this, uh, 280,000, uh, 290,000 shillings, let's say, 2,875 US dollars uh, per year. Uh, slightly larger companies, up to 10,000 farmers would pay $4,600 which is roughly half a dollar or 50 Kenyan shillings per farmer per year. In larger operations, we have a special agreement. Sometimes we work with very small cooperatives in a partnership. For example, uh, KCB Bank is introducing us to many small farmer cooperatives. And we have a special price because these are often cooperatives that have just maybe a few hundred farmers. Yeah, so it's basically the system is, is a little bit more restricted, but uh, the foundation would be uh, the same. So normally, if you buy an annual license fee, all the functionality is available for everybody. And our team is constantly helping the clients to make sure that you use as much of the functionality as possible. Yeah, we want you to be happy with the system, of course. So in the price is included the back office support. So whenever you need help, you contact us. And our team is there to, to help you. We are in 12 countries. Countries, You're lucky we are, uh, most of our people are based in Nairobi. So it's very easy to, uh, to even come on site. Um, whenever there's a new release, like three or four times per year, we, uh, we have some modifications to the software, like new reports or new functionalities. That is also, that is also automatically available for, for you. And there will be a re release note and a training program so you make sure that you can use all these functionalities that are constantly available uh, made available. And you can imagine 75 clients, 12 countries, uh, more than 20 different sectors. There's a lot of functionality in the system. And every year we add 
a lot additional functionality as well. So when we, uh, when we start the first year, we will need a few days to train your team. Um, yeah, so we will have a, an additional charge for that. Yeah, we, can, we can send you a quotation, a technical financial proposal, if you're interested to learn more after this. So just to summarize, <clears throat> so EPROT is, um, is really developed uh, yeah, for the purpose of managing farmers. Uh, uh, me and my wife, we needed to uh, sleep well. Uh, we had invested uh, all our money, our uh, retirement scheme basically in the company, and we could not afford to take any risks that the system would fail. So we have developed a very robust systems. We commercialized it 11 years later. And so it was really developed for the purpose of uh, managing our own company. Now, because of all that experience, we have a lot of, uh, we can really help a lot of our clients. We know that for many companies, it's very scary to, um, to start using IT systems in the beginning. So we can help uh, advise how to gradually implement the system. And the beauty about EPROT is that actually, if you want in the field, uh, all the work could be done on paper. And then in the office, it can be typed in. And it's, it's, it sounds um, like it's very um, addition, a lot of additional work, but it's actually quite efficient, especially if you know that there's a lot of resistance from your team to use, uh, start using the mobile applications. Um, we have, um, you can basically gradually introduce the system in the field. Maybe you start by using it for collections, then the field inspections, surveys. Now, so we, we have um, truly a system that works offline uh, and, and online, but also offline, which is very important. Uh, and we have a lot of experience with uh, offsite uh, and onsite support. In the last uh, two months, we have, we have started operations, for example, in Ghana and in uh, Guatemala, purely remote. Yeah, these countries, we have not even visited them. Uh, so we can really, uh, we have an excellent um, remote support team. Okay, so thank you very much.